Hi guys, hope you all are doing well. You know I did a video not too long ago called They Know What They Did. They know what they did. Yeah, they do. And I want to like talk about that a little bit more. Um, one of the things that we did talk about was how sometimes you could be trying to go back to the past. You're trying to get answers. You're trying to get closure. But a lot of times, guys, you cannot, you are not going to get closure from the person who abused you mentally, emotionally, physically. You're not going to get that. Now, some people, they do get it. Sometimes that person that did you wrong, they listen, they acknowledge, they ask you to forgive them, and you can be healed. But these are rare occasions. And truly, it's sad that it's rare, but it does happen. And so when that happens, that's a good thing, you know? And if that person is really sorry for what they've done and they've acknowledged it, then you don't want to be in a position where you keep rehashing it and bring it up, you know? If you guys are moving forward and working on your you know, uh, healing your relationship, then if there are disagreements, you can't go back, keep going back to, oh, like when you did this to me, because that's not fair. So let's get back to the topic at hand. They know what they did. So therefore, sometimes you trying to get closure is not going to happen. And one of the things, another thing that's really common with individuals that are this way is that they're going to focus on your responses, how you responded to them. They are going to focus on when you draw the line. They're going to be focused on, focused on when you stop communicating with them. Maybe you're no longer taking their phone calls. You're no longer responding to them. You're no longer going around them as you used to. You're no longer in that cycle. And now the focus is how you are responding or they focus on how you responded to them perhaps in not a positive way so now they want to label you and say you're the bad person they want to say you're the aggressor they want to say you're the reason why the relationship did not work they want to say this is why I did what I did or why I can't do what you're asking me to do but I want you to know they know what they did. Individuals like that have to spend a lot of time maintaining their facade and maintaining the illusion. It's important more than anything to them that once you have addressed it, that they have somebody that they can be in alliance with, have an alliance, or it's important that they remain, that their image is not tarnished in the community, those around them. And so what they're gonna do is the day you yelled at them, the day you responded poorly to them, that is going to be just a major thing and the reason why. But I want you to know, they know what they did. They know who they are. That's why they cannot be truthful about who they are. They can't say it in the proper order. If you, if you yelled at them, Okay, or you responded to them, or you stop, you stop communicating with them, they're going to change the order of how things happen. You would have been with them and tolerated some things for many years, decades, all your life if you were raised with them or by them. And they're going to ignore all the fillers in the middle. They're going to forget that actually I have been disrespectful to him or her several times. They have been this way. I did behave this way. They're, they're, they're not going to think of the times that they've done certain things, the time that you've tried to reason with them, the times that you have just moved on and did not, you, you, you um, allowed the matter to, to, to just go, well, how am I saying? You allow the matter to slide. You came back to them. Um, this, whether or not they even when they did not ask for forgiveness you still continue with them they're not gonna remember that 
but they are going to focus on when you draw the lines when you are no longer calling them when you are no longer around them they're going to focus on that and everything leading up to that their poor behavior their repeated offenses their repeated infidelity if that's the case for some abuse lies manipulation and some they just did not have an interest in the relationship the friendship the one-sidedness when you make your decisions all of those things are going to be forgotten they're going to flip it and say you did this and that's why i'm doing that but i want you to know they know what they did they know it why because they're deceiving they're changing the narrative if they felt what they did was right, then they will tell it and they will be able to recall it exactly as it happened. But they are, they have not come in, they can't even accept themselves and they lie to themselves. And what they do is they focus on their, their quote unquote good qualities. So in other words, they have to begin bargaining with themselves. Well, this, I know I do this, but at least I, I don't do that. I'm not as bad as this person. I, I don't do things as much as this person would have done it. It doesn't matter. You know, I mean, if you're holding less poop in your hand, it does not change the fact that this is poop. This is poop. But what they get into a place of, guys, is they want to compare their mess and say, well, the consistency of mine is not as messy as that one. And I don't have as much whatever in mind than that next person does. But at the end of the day, it is still the same thing. It's like someone saying, well, I don't sleep with kids that are under nine years old. That would be like a pedophile having the standard of, well, I'm not as bad as the one who's sleeping with children under nine years old. I only sleep with children from 10, between 10 and, you know, 14. Do you see what I'm saying? So they begin to tell themselves something because they cannot, they are unable to come to terms with who they are. They're unable to come to terms with the kind of person they are because they know that who they are is not good. They know what they did and you know what they've done. And so therefore, when you are pulled away from them, when God separates you from these individuals, when God begins to open your eyes and show you the truth about the person you once admired or even loved, the person that raised you, oh my gosh, that's really tough. Because there's a certain level of honor and love and you're just gonna, you're not gonna believe that before you believe that they're doing anything wrong to you. You're constantly over the years, you're gonna be looking at yourself. And even when you come to the terms that they're a certain way, you still go, well, you know, that's my parent and it doesn't matter. Why? Because it's the thing of, I raised you, I provided for you, I did this for you. So in other words, quid pro quo, I raised you so I can abuse you. I took care of you so I can play mind games with you. No. And if we understand the perfect order, not that you negate your parents, but it's God that provides for them to give to you. They will tell you, I could have aborted you. And the fact that they can say that to you and insult you. The only reason why they had you is because God protected you in their womb because it's in them to even utter that out of your mouth. It was in them to do it. They would have done it. But the grace of God and him protecting you said no he's not going to allow that because if it was up to them they'll do it don't take it lightly when a parent can say something like that to you it comes from a place of utter wickedness 
it's a place of utter wickedness when they tell you they could have given you up for adoption it is also cruel when they make jokes and say you're adopted and it's just a common thing it is a wickedness that they wrap in humor but guys what I'm telling you is allow the Lord to renew your mind there are many things that you see online there are many classes that teaches you about what they would call the narcissist and while the world um, say narcissist we understand there's a spiritual side to it there are things that you can understand in the natural but it's so important for you to understand the spiritual aspect of this because if you don't understand the spiritual aspect then you are going to find yourself yeah you're getting the natural thing but when they start to do when there's gains and certain things that's being played it's still going to weigh down on you and you're going to react poorly and you become a mini narcissist yourself or you become just like them there are people who they hate their family so much and they because of the hurt and the pain that even when they're away from them and they've been separated from them they now take all that pain and all that stuff within them because they did not release those things to God and allow him to take them through the process of healing properly they will now become in other words now they're bent they are going to make sure that nobody ever does to them what was does to them what how they were dealt by their family so in other words that's not going to happen to me i'm never going to allow this to happen to me and they become hypersensitive and really overdo things and so in their own minds they can turn around and be like well i'm not as bad as how they treated me well you know what that's exactly how they probably think too that they didn't treat you as badly as they were treated and they'll think about all the good things they did for you they know what they did be confident in that they know what they did because they did it and they were there when they did that <laughs> and they've done it many times over the years but it really boils down to how they view you and your perspective and their image of you they see you a certain way they don't care what you think because they don't have that respect for you at all they don't feel that they owe you an apology or an explanation because it's you but nevertheless it does not change who they are and what they have done and they know what they did because they continue to lie and run circles around you when you're trying to get to some sort of revolution resolution and closure but what I will say to you is do not allow them to hamper you and hinder you now that you're in a place to change and to grow. When you are no longer around them, when the communication is closed, be confident in that change and don't allow them to play the mind games to make you feel as if you are wrong and you are evil for starting a new beginning, for starting a new chapter with your family, to wanting to show your children something differently. You didn't invite them to the wedding. Oh! How could you? Because this is a person that will come to your wedding and make it all about themselves. There's nothing wrong with that. Somebody, you need to hear this. You're thinking if you should invite them to your wedding or not. Some people you cannot and it's not hate. But you know they have the habit to come and rain on your parade and make it all about them. Some people, they still want to be around your kids and your family. But you have to make tough choices because they'll come in and sometimes they'll poison your children, poison your mind, tell your spouse things about you, get around your friends and your circles. Maybe you made the mistake of saying, okay, I'm going to let you in and they ruined that. But you have a right to safeguard yourself and to experience happiness and not allow them to continue the sequel of abuse in your life. So guys, I would tell you, they know what they did they know why they're not invited they know why you are not letting them in anymore they know why you are not calling them they know it but they want to focus on the stance and the position that you have you that you are now on and guilt you into making you think that you are wrong instead of humbling themselves and saying you know what i did wrong and being willing to show you through actions that they have changed and allowing you through time and you know 
how they, and depending on what they show you, taking your time and maybe opening those doors again. But maybe you have done that many times and God will pull you away because he wants you to be in perfect peace. He wants you to be able to live your life and be happy. It's not that there's never going to be disappointments, but the abuse and the cycle of it, it is not healthy for you. It's not healthy for your family. It's not healthy for your mind. And you'll live a very miserable life. So again, guys, there's nothing wrong with taking your stance and your position because they know exactly what they did. All right, guys.